Pisces 3, the petrified forest. Petrified means turned to stone. And we have here an image of a forest, a, a very vibrant statement of the life force, a living thing, a forest, and yet it's been turned to stone. And we can suffer that fate. We're vibrant and alive and, and, and filled with the possibility of making choices in every moment. And yet, not everybody exercises this ability to choose and thereby create the version of life that they choose to have. And we need to remember that Unless we use this facility of free will, then we lose it. This is true of everything. Use it or lose it. And people who just carry on the track of the same old, same old, what they do, they continue to do, with no additional life force entering into their choices, it, they, they, they take the easy path, they, they do what is done by everyone and what they've always done before. They're losing the facility to stay alive, actually. The body continues to pump blood around the system and, and breathe and stuff, but the, the mind doesn't understand the glory of life. The mind crystallizes, ossified into a, a petrified state of being, like this is the way that things are. Well, that's, that's nonsense. Things are not any particular way. How could they be that way? Life changes, so whatever was is no more. Every single moment is unique and new. We don't, we don't know what it is yet. We have to observe what it is. And that sense of observation, this witnessing of life, is our participation, at the very least, without any choice. As long as we're witnessing life, then we're participating in it. And if we see life as a melody, an orchestral melody of many, many people singing their own songs and, and playing life the way they want it played, and the overall sound just works its way into the note of life, and that, that note is what we need to hear and what we need to co-create in our choices. We need to contribute to that because we're part of it all. And if we don't, then we die off. We become petrified as that forest. Notwithstanding the fact that even within the petrified forest, we can infer what life has taken place previously. There are clues. Archaeologists look at signs of life, which uh, it could date back a very, very long time indeed. Dinosaurs go back a million years or something ridiculous. I think it's 60 million years. And somehow we can still work out what a dinosaur must have looked like, because the, the bones that we find today still give evidence of life that was. Nothing that we choose, in other words, no contribution to life actually is wasted or, or dies off. It, it, it just gets stored in some way um, as a crystallized memory of a particular moment. So whatever we do choose and whatever we witness in life contributes to the whole orchestral sound of it all. And we have no real choice about that. Um, if we want to be alive and stay alive. Now this for some people would find, uh, they would find this range of choice overwhelming because there's, there's no real lessons to be taught that you can get right. Um, the lessons that are taught we can either get right or wrong and there's nobody really to tell us which we have done. We have to know internally, intuitively, make it up for ourselves. What's the right or the wrong thing in any situation? Right and wrong are, are not realistic rules for life. We're 
we're only given to make up our own choice about what we do. For it's right for us. It's not an absolute. And without that choice of what we do in any particular set of situations, um, without that, then we're constantly having to cope with the unknown. Now, for some, that's a, a liberating experience that they feel creatively expressive in every moment. It's tiring if, if you're not up for that kind of thing. For others, it's just overwhelming and, and somewhat intimidating. And the difference between those two conditions of whether we're excited or intimidated by the range of life available to us and the uncertainty about what's right and wrong in any particular moment, the difference between those two states of being lies in how well we experience either fear or trust. If we fear life, then we tend to clench against it. And, and that's the action of turning something vibrant into stone, which lacks life, which lacks self-expression. And we clench. That's what fear is, is a clenching up against life. Whereas a relaxing into life, saying yes to new things, trusting that we'll be okay, something will work in our favor, we'll, we'll be okay one way or another, sooner or later, we'll be okay. And that's the only way it can work. All life is vibration. Now that means up and down, everything goes up and down. That's what vibration is. Therefore, that's what life is. So sometimes we're on the up and sometimes we're on the down. Sometimes life is getting richer and bigger and more expansive and sometimes it's contracting and we need to focus on on, on dealing with stuff, coping with stuff, and, and we might not like that, but we can't get around it. That's part of it all. So this whole idea of expansion and contraction, like, like the lungs, you know, that, that's, that's life. That's the rhythm of life. So even if you're going through a bad time, and th th there's this sense of clenching against the bad luck that's coming your way, it's not healthy. It's not healthy to clench. It's not healthy to breathe in that limited way or to live in that limited, constricted way. It's just not healthy. And, and like right now with COVID, everyone in the world that have, has actually experienced the inability to breathe, they, they're, they're getting the point really clearly. What's healthy is you, you breathe in deep and long and you breathe out deep and long. That's healthy. That's what you learn when you study meditation. That's what you learn when you study yoga. That's healthy. And short breaths, which are based on fear, that, that's not healthy. It could not be clearer. We, we mustn't live in this anxious, clenched, short breath kind of way, because Health comes from slow, long breaths, trusting that when we breathe out, an in-breath will come. That when we lose opportunities in life and attachments and possessions and disappointments, when, when we breathe it all out and we're losing stuff, just know that there is this body flinch, when as soon as you've actually let go of as much as you can afford to let go of, then you're certain to attract what you need to fill you and to revitalize all parts of your body. The breath is the clearest metaphor for how to live. So don't tighten your breath, don't tighten your life, don't live out of fear. Loosen it all. Live out of trust. Lengthen your breath. Live out of expansive faith. And know that whatever you choose is registered in the orchestral music of life. And you cannot fail to contribute. So, would you like to sing a beautiful, trusting, faithful, 
expansive song that would beautify all of life for everyone. Mm -hmm.